This is the Arctic Freezer 2 240, an almost perfect all-in-one liquid cooler. Its performance is insanely good, and they thought of pretty much everything, except for what well, my only real gripe about it is basically the mounting method. If you can get over that, this is a stunning cooler, an incredible value, and something that you definitely should stick around to check out and understand a bit more about, so that's what all this video is for. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, Arctic makes some great air coolers, namely the uh, Freezer 34 Esports Duo that is still my go-to recommendation for a budget air cooler. It's fantastic, highly recommend you check out the review in the cards up above. But suffice to say, when I heard the buzz about their liquid coolers, I was excited to check them out, and man, am I impressed. This is an incredible sort of package, essentially. The radiator that you get here is insanely thick. It's 38 millimeters uh, without the fans installed, which actually come pre-installed in the box. Really nice to see. Uh, for comparison, a standard AIO radiator is around 30 millimeters, so it's almost a centimeter thicker. The end tanks are also relatively small. The tubing is actually in the center as well, which can make it a bit easier to root. And the fans that, like I said, come pre-installed are Arctic's P12 pressure oriented, so they can push air through uh, with good static pressure through the radiator. The tubing is sleeved throughout the whole run and actually does the same thing that my usual go-to AIO, the Frank Design S24 does, which is that all of the fans are pre-connected to the pump and routed through the sleeving. So there's only one four pin PWM fan header you need to connect to make this entire thing work. No more mess of cables, it's just one and I love it. Now the pump block unit is a bit of a weird shape. There's a couple of reasons for that. One, Ace Attack and Cool It tend to own pretty much all the patents on uh, pump on block designs. So they have to kind of get around that, but uh, they also have a rather innovative feature that you won't find on pretty much any other AIO, which is a little fan. Now this fan is designed to spread out air around your motherboard's VRMs, the, the power delivery for your CPU. One of the main drawbacks of running an AIO cooler is that you often are lacking airflow in that area, and especially with the, the newer Intel chips, for example, which can be drawing two or 300 watts, potentially even at stock, well, it's worth having a bit of airflow, and this does a really good job. Remarkably, despite its tiny size, it's incredibly quiet. In fact, the whole thing is uh, about the same, if not quieter than my usual Frank Design S24, which is already one of the quieter AOs on the market. I was expecting to hear sort of high-pitched whine from this, but even with the side panel off, I didn't notice it at all, and with the side panel on, it was basically silent. For me, the main letdown of the Freezer 2 is its mounting method. Arctic are using effectively a one-size-fits-all bracket that screw onto the pump block units, uh, and this is, I think, potentially even the exact same bracket you find on a lot of their other coolers, which does help keep the cost down, but means that it's a bit of a uh, sort of awkward method to get it installed. On an AMD CPU, on a normal, say, Asetek design cooler, all you need to do is remove the standard bracket that comes on the motherboard, and then screw with your hands some standoffs into that board, or into the, the back plate. Then you can put some thermal paste on, drop the cooler on top, and put four relatively large and easy to thread on thumb screws on, and that's it installed. With this one, what you have to do is remove the standard brackets, but you then have to put two white plastic spacer rings uh, down over it, then place another bracket on top of that, then use two screwdriver only screws to, to bolt that down, repeat the same on the top for a total of four tiny plastic spacers that will fall over and make it difficult for you to install. Uh, also, there are two positions that you can mount it. You wanna mount it closer to the top VRMs to, to get good contact, but Anyway, that wasn't explained in the instructions. And then you can uh, attach the, the arms to the pump and then use four 
very small thumb screws to hold that down. For the average person who installs their CPU cooler once and then doesn't look at it for the next two or three years until they need to upgrade, this is fine. Like, you can install those brackets with the motherboard out of the case and on its back so it's nice and easy to do, whereas if you're trying to do it like me in the case, it can be very difficult because the, those white plastic standoffs just fall off. Uh, but from my perspective, because of this mounting method, I don't think that I'm going to be using this as my you know, main testing AIO, despite it being better than my current one. Now, it's actually better on Intel if you're mounting it to an Intel CPU here. Uh, they include a fairly standard backplate and the same sort of standoffs you'd find if you're using a standard Ace Tech cooler. And all you do is uh, screw the backplate on with those four standoffs that holds it in place and then you drop the cooler down, use those four relatively small thumb screws to hold it in place and that's it. Unfortunately, because of their one size fits all bracket that go on the, the pump block units, they were uh, basically oversized and it came very close to touching my top VRMs on the motherboard I was using and just straight up not fitting thanks to the uh, top M.2 slots. It was basically a perfect fit between the two. It didn't cause any problems, I was able to mount it just fine, but it should probably be noted that depending on your configuration, especially if you're using say an ITX motherboard or MATX where things might be a little bit tighter, you might have difficulty fitting this on an Intel board because of those arms. But if you can get over the mounting method, this is an incredible cooler. Thanks to the combination of more surface air from the thicker radiator and a pretty decent pump and block design, this performs better than pretty much any AIO I've used in the past, at least from the same 240mm category. Uh, take a look at the graph of my Ryzen 5900X running the Blender BMW scene rendering that out. You can see that it barely breaks a sweat. The CPU is drawing 142 watts here, and at peak, I think it maxes at 66 degrees Celsius at the end. It's really not that much. At a maximum peak, uh, if you run for sustained loads or longer renders, like in the Gooseberry render, for example, it gets close to 80 degrees Celsius. It's in the sort of 75 to 80 degree range. Uh, although I should make that clear for, for comparison, the Fractal Design S24 I normally use for that sort of testing would run at uh, between 80 and 85 degrees Celsius. I think it maxed at 83 uh, in my previous testing with it. Um, so that one does run a touch hotter. Even while testing with a much hotter 9900K, that one did peak at 88 degrees Celsius in the Blender run, although that's kind of to be expected from those CPUs. And uh, I should also mention that, again, for comparison, if I was using something like the Fractal Design S24, I would expect more in the mid to low 90 degrees Celsius range. So again, this does offer better cooling performance. And again, all of that, and it's just as, if not quieter. And the final reason that you should go and buy one of these as your next AIO is its price. A Corsair H100i, the, the cheapest one that's selling, which I think is the, the H100i Platinum, is around £102 right now. If you want to buy the newer Elite Capital X, the fancy RGB one, then that one's going to set you back £130. But this? £92. Yeah, much cheaper, and hey, you don't get, you know, some fancy RGB lighting, you do get a better cooler that will perform better, but if you care about the RGB, well, I'm sure you could spend that £40 that you'd save on some RGB fans or strips instead. Overall, while the mounting method means that this won't be my next testing, you know, CPU cooler, I would be more than happy to use this in my main rig. This is a fantastic cooler and it gets a solid recommendation from me and I think becomes my new go-to for what CPU cooler to get if you're out for a good one and especially if you don't care about RGB. That is my thoughts. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the Freezer 2 240? Is this something you'd pick up yourself? Would you go with a fancier RGB one or would you go with an air cooler instead? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. Of course, as always, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description down below if you want to check it out and see pricing when and where you watch this, because it can and does vary. That link will be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see all that good stuff. 
Otherwise, that is pretty much it for me. As always, there is a load of links in the description down below you can check out from merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one as a uh, sort of 2060 type thing that I designed in Blender or a load of other designs. There's also uh, stuff like Patreon for access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos and you support me directly too and a load of other affiliate links to places like Overclock UK and Amazon that sort of stuff if you want to check those out. Otherwise, I'll leave some more videos on the end cards for you to check out and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.